and hello again and as you can see I finally got the bike on its wheels at last in fact it's been quite a productive week because I've got a lot done I've got the seat back from Anthony the upholsterer did a great job of course and it didn't cost too much money to have it all redone that's great I finished painting all the brackets and so on at the front end so I can bolt on the headlamp at last speedo as well I've also fitted the foot pegs, hangers and so on, all the foot controls have completed and I've polished them. Now I'm not too sure yet if I'm going to keep it polished because I might change my mind if I think it's too blingy and uh, if that's the case then I'll just get them hard anodized black. So the reason why I've polished them first is because with anodizing it shows every mark, every scratch in the surface, it doesn't hide anything so you need to polish it anyway if you're going to get it anodized. What I will do though is get the pegs hard and a nice black because they'll soon get scuffed up and dirty and scratched anyway so uh, I may as well get them done as I say hard and a nice and hard anodizing really is hard it does work very very well so uh, yeah I'll get them done at some point in the future at Camco to a, a local service provider near me yes yeah, so overall I'm pretty happy with it there are still things that need to be done for example I'm still missing some fasteners such as the uh, top nut here for the, for the uh, shocks and these nuts are wrong, these bolts are wrong but I have started to replace some old fasteners such as the, the fasteners which hold on the calipers they've been all been replaced with um, new fasteners of stainless steel from Pro Bolt yeah so I'm pretty happy with it one thing that does surprise me though is how tall it looks at the back it looks a bit sort of street fighter-ish and I think that's because oops, let's pick it up and that's because these shocks are about 20 millimeters longer than the standard shocks for the bike so actually jacks up a wee bit what I can do though if needed is actually dial them down a bit I can adjust these preloads and, and lower the bike slightly if needed but I actually quite like it and obviously when I get the, uh, the rear lighted and the, the rear plate it might not look quite so empty here yes yeah, so overall the bike so far I've also of course got my Delkovic stainless steel black exhaust system to fit and now I've got the pegs in place I can do that next so let's go and open the box up and see what we've got and so the bike now on its wheels at last I've brought out the exhaust system from Delkovic to hopefully give it a trial fit on the bike so I'm just going through it now and check and see what I've got and what I've not got I must say I'm quite impressed they give you quite a lot here you've got the, uh, the seals for the exhaust ports, springs, and you can get quite a nice spring puller in this bag, that's quite nice. I may even give you, amongst other things, as it gone, a big pile of stickers, we all like stickers, these five stickers there, and even give you, would you believe, a pair of white gloves to wear, and that's because when you've got a brand new exhaust pipe and you put it on your bike for the first time, You've really got to be careful to clean it very, very well before you start the bike for the first time. Otherwise, you can mark the exhaust pipe permanently. So that's always something to worry about, something to be aware of. So yeah, I've got some gloves there. But having gone through it, I've realised I'm sure of one part, or rather eight parts, because I don't have the split collets that go behind the, uh, the collars that hold the exhaust pipe to the head. I thought I had some but I haven't so just ordered them from Z Power. they're about three pounds each we need eight of them but there you go and they should be here in a few days time so I have to wait to fit the exhaust pipe for those uh, few days but in the meantime I've still got lots to do and now here we are it's the next day and thankfully the parts I need have arrived from Z Power, and also I've got some more things that have arrived in the post this morning so from Z Power, I've got amongst other things got the uh, exhaust studs I need which will let me fit the exhaust system hopefully that's great I've also got let's see oh yes these are uh, exhaust split collets and it turns out I don't need them anyway because the headers are designed a bit differently on the Delcovic so they're not required that's okay because they'll come in handy for maybe the Mark II project later on and also what I've got here is something we've been waiting for for a while and these are the, uh, the clamps to hold the Mercuri carbs onto the inlet rubbers and that means now I can fit 
the carbs at last. So that's something else we'll do today. And also I've got here, do this package here, we've got a front sprocket. Now, when it comes to sprockets, I've been going back and to about the correct gearing to use on the bike. And it gets quite complicated because we're going for a, a 530 chain rather than a 630 chain that alters the number of teeth and so on. But what we do know is that a bike like mine that's standard as I said thousand or Z thousand mark two, whatever, the gear ratio is 2.2 to 1 or thereabouts. That's from the front sprocket to the back sprocket. And so what I've done is I've gone from 2.2 to 1 to 2 to 1. And that's because I want higher gearing, given that the engine is now more powerful and bigger, and overall the bike will hopefully be a bit lighter than a standard old Z1000. Also, of course, I won't be taking a pillion. Actually, I don't like having a bike that's undergeared in any way at all. Anyway, what I've got here is a front sprocket from a ZZR 1100. And the reason I've got this is because the supplies are the same, obviously, but also because, as standard, this sprocket comes built in with a 15mm offset to help clear the rear tyre, the wire rear tyre that I've got on the bike at the moment. Now, I could have bought an aftermarket sprocket made for that purpose and they're £65, which this one is just £19. So, you know, which one to go for? I'll go for this one. And they say they're like 5 8 offset for £65 and 15 mil is nearest damn it, 5 8 so hopefully this will be okay. I've also ordered obviously the rear sprocket and the rear sprocket again is a bit dodgy because Jeff when he made the rear wheel years ago didn't use any thread pattern or bolt pattern known to man, he just did his own thing so no standard rear sprocket is going to fit that bike which makes life a bit tricky. But never mind because what we do is we buy a blank sprocket in my case from BNC Express and I've actually got a few of them here that I used when I had those wheels on my drag bike but sadly the ones I've got are all too big so of course I've got to order a new one I'm getting a 30, oh, let me see, 34 tooth race sprocket and uh, that's due in a few weeks time because they're all out of stock and they've got to make some more but anyway that's not a great problem yeah so hopefully that'll be fine and uh, let's see what else we've got oh yes I've also got a new rectifier regulator and this is from a great company called Electrex and they make both rectifiers and also alternators that sort of thing or even rewind your existing alternator and they're of value and in fact what's interesting is this one says here do not be used not to be used with a lithium iron battery so I suspect in the past there were people fitting these standard rectifiers with a lithium battery and it doesn't like it and it, something breaks somewhere along the line so uh, I should not be using a lithium iron battery on the bike but anyway they're pretty good value I can't remember how much they were about 60 pounds I think which isn't bad at all really and in fact I didn't buy one I bought two because I need one for that and one for the Mark II in the future so, so it's worthwhile buying them while you're ordering uh, a part from the same place it saves saves postage yes yeah, so that's fine so what's next then what's next is well first of all I've got to drink some tea then I need to uh, get organized get, get the exhaust system unwrapped and hopefully get it all fitted to the bike and that's what's next and so I've just got the first pipe loosely fitted unfortunately for me they're all numbered which is quite handy one two three four so that's four, I've got to do three now and then two and one. So yeah, so far so good and come back when I've done them all. Phew, so that's all four done. The down pipes now covered in my greasy finger marks so I didn't wear any white gloves sadly. And the main problem was for me was keeping the copper seals in the heads as I tried to put the, the headers in place. No doubt someone's going to tell me of a, a method to do it but it was uh, yeah, quite frustrating at times, it kept on falling out, but anyway that's done now. They're all very loose, so now I'm going to fit, where's it gone? I'm now going to fit this uh, collector, and I guess you can see they've kindly numbered it, one, two, three, four. So touch wood, even I wouldn't get it wrong, but we'll see. And so the down pipes loosely fitted, I've now fitted the collector box down here, and that's where we have a problem. And that problem, which could be a big problem, is that this exhaust pipe will not fit this bike. Now, I did expect some issues around the brackets and so on because 
Obviously this back end is much wider than the standard GPZ1100B1 which is what this exhaust system was made for but I must say I am quite surprised how far out it is. And now here we are it's the next morning and I've just rolled the bike out to get some better light. Though having said that it's just about to rain so uh, I won't be out here too long. So now we've got daylight hopefully you can see the problem with the exhaust system. This uh, outlet pipe here from the collector box it basically goes straight into the underside of the, the uh, lever and it can carry on and hit the swing arm. I'm not sure if you can see it there so let me uh, bring the camera around and you can see it a lot easier. So I'll pick up the tripod just bring it there and I hope you can see the problem will go right around there you can see how close it is to the, the exhaust pipes too far too close to the swing arm. So that's the problem I'm afraid. Go back again yeah that is a problem and so having slept the problem overnight i think i've got a solution which is in two parts first of all these pegs need to be raised up quite a lot i've been checking to see other bikes like mine and it seems these pegs are still far too low even though we've changed them once i've now got to change them again so this back plate here that we spent a long time making and polishing we'll have to go and we'll make another one and the bikes I've seen, it looks like the peg is about level with the swing arm pivot, so it's going to have to be raised up quite a lot. And because it's so high, I don't want the bike to be uncomfortable, and that means also the peg's going to have to go back a bit more. So it'll end up about here, where sort of the mass cylinder is, something like that. So first of all, that'll solve the problem of the, the pipe hitting the pegs. It also solves the problem of the uh, side stand on the far side hitting the gear lever so again that's two problems solved but I've still got the problem of the pipe and the exhaust system here the silencer hitting the, uh, the swing arm and to solve that problem I'm going to take this off here extend it by about an inch at least and maybe even two inches and maybe change the angle slightly if that's not difficult I've just got a hacksaw off this pipe here add in a section same diameter put it back in again away we go. But as I mentioned yesterday, last night rather, the issue is going to be to replicate and mimic the finish on this exhaust system which is a, a ceramically anodized. So luckily Canco aren't too far away so next week I'm hopefully going to take the pegs down anyway to get them hard anodized and I'll take this this piece here, this 4 into one piece and ask them can they replicate this finish. If they can, all good. If they can't, then I guess I'll just have to spray the area with a uh, high, high temperature satin paint. The good news is the problem's going to be underneath here, under the engine. So if it's not quite a perfect match, it's not the end of the world because you can't see it anyway. But yeah, that's, uh, that's something I need to work on. So next thing to do then is to make up a template that I want to make this backing plate from. In cardboard of course, take it all to Jeff. He won't be happy because this is the second one he's made for me. So now he's got to make a third one, but never mind. And yeah, so that'll be happening early next week. And also what I didn't mention yesterday, because I ran out of time, is that I fitted the uh, Mikuni RS-34 carbs. They were quite easy, um, a bit fiddly of course, but you know, they went on okay. And one problem I've got is I'm not having an air box. I'm just having um, individual filters, maybe foam or K&Ns or something like that. And that raises a small problem in that all the weight of the carbs is now being held by these inlet rubbers, which isn't ideal. So now I've got the, the carbs on the engine, what I can do is make a little bracket that helps support the carburetors that goes from the centre of the carb tops here up to some point on the frame. And it'll just help it to take the weight of the carbs. Now I couldn't do that before, obviously the, the carbs were on the bike, so that was something that had to wait. But that's something I can do, you know, in the next week or so. Yeah, so that's progress or lack of progress so far. Once again, this bike is fighting me all the way to completion, but we'll get there in the end. We'll bloody get there in the end. And yeah, we're getting there. Also, I've noticed that the, um, the spring preload here is set quite high, so I can wind them down a bit and, and lower the bike a wee bit. Because at the moment, that back end looks a little bit too high to me. But anyway, we can play around with that at some point in the future. So now it's starting to rain, 
So we'll end the video here. I'll put the bike back in the uh, garage and we'll continue next week.